Sup, nerds. We've got some misconceptions to clear up, and a few straight-up lies to dispel, all related to the fly Amanita muscaria, although my points are applicable to the panther caps Amanita pantherina as well. Doubly so, in fact, as they are far more potent than Amanita muscaria. In recent years, I've noticed that this particular species has gotten a lot of attention, and along with mainstream attention usually comes people who don't really know what the fuck they're talking about, who will state everything as a matter of fact. And thanks to the internet, these bite-sized pieces of convenient misinformation spread like wildfire. In my opinion, this phenomenon has arised for a couple of reasons. For one, it's a very recognizable species. You couldn't confuse it with anything else, even if you wanted to. It's usually the first thing people think about when they hear the word mushroom. Combine that with the fact that a bunch of ancient people used them for a few things, and you've got a recipe for disaster. The comment section of your local witch's comments official Instagram isn't exactly a scientific journal. Nah, son, that's some pseudoscience. A steaming pile of fan fiction. I never thought I had to say this. But the first point I want to make is that this is a toxic mushroom. If a grilled cheese sandwich caused any of the symptoms I'm about to have an episode over, you would say it's toxic. It can be made edible, but it's a bit more complicated than just frying them for a couple of minutes on each side. They have to be boiled in several changes of water to make sure all the active compounds are extracted and discarded. If you don't do that, and you just treat them like any other edible mushroom, they will fuck you up so bad. But how bad? Will it kill you? Probably not. Most people have the constitution to power through. But as with every other drug or toxin, it's all about the size of the dose. But let's say you've prepared four or five caps. That seems reasonable, as they do shrink quite a bit when they're fried. They're fungi. It's what they do. About 20 to 30 minutes after consumption, the first effects will start making their appearance, usually starting with general numbness. A bit like a mild alcohol buzz. Nothing you can't handle, right? Well, that's only the beginning. Before long, within two or three hours, you'll start sweating and salivating profusely. Usually accompanied by overwhelming nausea, ferocious vomiting, and abdominal pain. You know, the fan favorites. Some people experience diarrhea, almost to the level of fecal incontinence, but that's one of the rarer symptoms. Those are just the most immediately obvious symptoms. But let's not forget the fact that Amanita muscaria is a psychedelic mushroom. As the initial physical discomfort subsides, that is, if it subsides, the neurological effects will start kicking in, starting with some minor disorientation akin to alcohol intoxication, and ending with confusion, visual and auditory hallucinations, amnesia, and possible seizures. Seizures are rare, but they do happen from time to time, mostly in children. Depending on the amount ingested, some of the neurological symptoms like confusion, disorientation, and amnesia can persist for several days. In short, you risk losing your shit, both figuratively and literally. But say you did do everything right, and properly disposed of all the toxins. Would I recommend it? Fuck no. Tastes like a leaky asshole. There are way better edible fungi available if you know what to look for, which isn't hard to get into if you really want to. And most of them don't come with a bunch of rules regarding how you should go about preparing them. While some cultures have been known to consume these mushrooms for sustenance, they are far more notorious for their use as an intoxicant. People have been getting wasted on these things for thousands of years at this point, probably for as long as humans have been around, and humans aren't even the only species that indulges in the practice. They're pretty much the oldest known recreational drug, along with some other fungi and ethanol, in the form of decomposing fruit. But. Just because reindeer can stuff their faces with the fresh, unprocessed fruiting bodies, it doesn't mean it's safe for humans to do so. If they are to be taken as a psychedelic, they still need some processing. Specifically, they need to be exposed to temperatures between 50 and 70 Celsius for an extended period of time. The reason for that is gonna need some insight into the deep lore. Hold on. Amanita muscaria fruiting bodies contain three main active compounds. Ibotanic acid, muscimol, and trace amounts of muscarine. Muscimol is the primary psychoactive compound, while ibotanic acid and muscarine are legitimate neurotoxins. Muscarine is the most destructive of the two, but both are quite potent. There are species of fungi that are considered lethally toxic due to their high content of muscarine. 
Ironically, this particular species, its namesake, only contains a negligible amount. So it doesn't really factor in unless you've consumed an astronomical amount of mushrooms. Actual poisonings resulting from the consumption of Amanita muscaria fruiting bodies primarily happen due to the ibotanic acid, the real villain of the story. Albeit a very easy villain to deal with. When ibotanic acid is heated to a certain point, it loses one carboxyl group from its molecular structure and is reduced to carbon dioxide and muscimol. Although muscimol and ibotanic acid both have some psychoactive effects, the ibotanic acid is responsible for some of the more serious neurological symptoms like seizures and amnesia. There is some evidence to suggest chronic use can lead to brain damage somewhere down the road, but it's a bit up in the air. Weirdly enough, there's not a whole lot of information about the long-term effects of ibotanic acid use in humans. As far as psychedelics and toxic fungi go, this was a weird one. Not only does each individual specimen contain differing amounts of the active compounds, they also seem to affect everyone differently. Where one person becomes euphoric and relaxed, another may find themselves spooning an intergalactic toilet in the Horsehead Nebula for 10 hours. In conclusion, it is true that they're not very dangerous in terms of sheer toxicity. But as with most things, it's not an either-or type of deal. They won't kill you as readily as the death caps and destroying angels. But that doesn't mean it's a good idea to eat them. Because if you don't boil them to dissolve all the toxins into the water, you'll still get a hit of that muscarine every time you do so. So the next time you're out and about, during the concluding months of the year, and you come across a hedgerow that is just littered with flyagerics, it's better to just stop for a moment and admire their aesthetics. Because although they're relatively tame as far as toxic mushrooms go, anything with a skirt and a vulva is generally bad for you. <laughs>